Hello and welcome. This is World of Wastewater. This is part 8 in a series going over a wastewater exam that you can find a link to in this video's description. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 36 through 40. If you make even more poop jokes now because of your job than you did when you were 10, hit the like button and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. In an activated sludge process, a reactor that is designed to have influent fed at two or more points along the length of the reactor is referred to as A. Plug flow B. Step feed C. Sequential batch D. Oxidation ditch The answer is B, step feed. The step feed configuration is very useful because it allows the operator to choose how they will distribute the influent going into an aeration basin in steps. This is particularly beneficial when dealing with shock loads. By distributing the shock load across the aeration basin, you minimize any decreases in dissolved oxygen concentration along the length of the basin. What is the typical cause of ponding on a trickling filter? A. Excessive biological growth on the media B. Foreign material C. Insufficient filter wetting D. Insufficient ventilation The answer is A. Excessive biological growth on the media Ponding occurs when influent can no longer pass through the filter media. The video displayed is of a working trickling filter, but as you can imagine, if that water was not draining through, it would sit on top, causing issues. It's important to avoid too much biomass from accumulating on the filter media. This can be avoided by increasing the recirculation pump rate and slowing down the arm going around the filter, promoting the sloughing of excess biomass. An atmosphere is oxygen deficient when the oxygen level is below A. 17% B, 19.5%, C, 20%, D, 21.5%. The answer is B, 19.5%. OSHA has determined the optimal range for oxygen in the air for humans to be between 19.5% and 23.5%. Lack of oxygen or the presence of harmful gases such as hydrogen sulfide when entering confined spaces has taken many lives over the years. One must always check a confined space using a functioning and calibrated gas detector before entering, and a gas detector should remain with you while inside a confined space. There should also be someone outside of the confined space who is responsible for monitoring the safety of those inside the space. Most dissolved oxygen in a facultative stabilization lagoon comes from A. Nitrification B. Algae photosynthesis C. Breakdown of organic matter D. Addition of sodium nitrate The answer is B. Algae photosynthesis Facultative lagoons are a simple and effective way to treat wastewater when permits are not very stringent. A traditional facultative lagoon will let Mother Nature do its thing. Photosynthesizing algae that grows on the surface of the lagoon will introduce oxygen into the water during the day. At night, when there is no sun, there is little to no oxygen production taking place. If 5 ounces of dry polymer is added to 15 gallons of water, what is the percent strength of the polymer solution? There are 16 ounces in a pound. A, 0.25%, B, 0.5%, C, 1%, D, 10%. The answer is A, 0.25%. Hold on to your butts. It's time for a math breakdown. This question may seem intimidating, but it's actually quite easy. All we need to do is figure out some simple unit conversions and turn it into a percent. I'd like to note that it doesn't matter if you round your answers or not, your final answer will be very close to the correct choice if you follow these steps. 
The first step is to convert ounces of dry polymer into pounds of dry polymer. There are 16 ounces in a pound, so let's divide 5 ounces by 16 ounces, which equates to 0.31 pounds. In step 2, we convert gallons of water to pounds of water. You should know and memorize that 1 gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. To convert gallons of water to pounds, we must multiply 15 gallons by 8.34 pounds per gallon. This gives us an answer of 125.1 pounds. To figure out the concentration of polymer in solution, we next divide the pounds of dry polymer by the pounds of water. 0.31 pounds of dry polymer divided by 125.1 pounds of water equals 0.00247, which I rounded to 0.0025. In part four, we convert our previous answer to a percent. 0.0025 multiplied by 100 is 0.25%. This is the percent strength of polymer solution and our correct answer for this question, choice A. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the others on this channel. If you want to help us make more great content for operators, there's a link to the World of Wastewater PayPal in the description. See you next time on World of Wastewater.